After the first video where I showed you eight different mediums to make mixed media portraits and the second video how to use in seven different techniques those mediums, now today I want to mix and match mediums and techniques and get an art style. What is an art style? You have to look at different elements to characterize an art style. First thing is the color, meaning the palette that is used by the artist. Some people have very bright or very muted palette, high key, low key, this is something interesting. The line, are they using line or not? Is it well defined? Is it a bit blurry? Is it soft? Do you have hard and soft edges? The shape, what kind of shape are you using? Is it realistic? Is it geometric? Is it abstract? The texture, and this relates a lot to the medium you are using. You cannot get the same texture with watercolor and oil pastel, let's say. And then do you have a 3D effect or is it flat? Do you have shadows or is it a front view? Then you have the techniques. How are you using your brush? Do you have visible brush strokes? Is it soft? Is it um, a specific method like pointism, like stippling, or is it printmaking? And then we can talk about the theme and the subjects that are painted. You can also talk about the mood, the feeling when you are looking at the painting or the drawing. Is it symbolist? Do you have elements that refer to something else? Then you can look at the historical context. Is it nowadays? Is it in a period where artists were meaning something with their art? Political or belief against war or modernism or whatever. And you can then distill everything and get to a style. And of course you have, I would say, art movements like Impressionism, Cubism, Symbolism, Fauvism, you have a lot. But nowadays we are more diverse, I think. We don't really fall into a category like they did in that period. So it's pretty hard to really define. So I have four different styles that I use. The first style is cute. I call it cute because either the shape, the color, the subject, the style of the drawing um, makes it cute. And just to make sure we are on the same page here, a style has nothing to do with the technique or the medium. You can have any medium, any technique and still get something cute. So for example, this one is um, the plain shapes without lines, it's gouache, and it gives a cute style. This one I would call her cute because she has um, big cheeks, big eyes, she has a butterfly. The elements I used in the drawing make it cute. This one also is cute, not this one because this one looks hungry, but this one looks really, really cute. Big eyes, eyelashes, big cheeks, cute nose are the elements that you can use for a cute face like this one or like those two. And they are watercolor and brush pen. This is a non-field shape technique with an outline. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will send you back to the previous video. The second style is stylized. And what I mean by that is that I'm not looking for realism either in the colors or in the shapes and or in the shapes. Let's say this one, for example, the colors are obviously not realistic and it's very stylized because I have really tried to get only the values of the portrait, but it can also be stylized with the colors. It's by no means realistic and I don't want it to be realistic. I want it to be stylized like this one also. And the technique is doodle and the medium is uh, acrylic ink. 
and here also it's stylized. And the technique is still doodle and the medium is um, water-soluble crayon. Like here too, it's really about the expression rather than the actual depiction of the reality. Or this one, which is really stylized and it's getting close to abstraction if I push it a bit further like this one it's beginning to be impossible to read as a portrait but it can also be this the colors are completely unrealistic on the face or it can be this the colors are quite realistic but the shapes are not and this one the technique is continuous line with a pen and a little bit of watercolor. So stylized is a style by itself, but it's sometimes hard to differentiate from the third style. And if you want to shape your art style, you can do two things. Either watch the video that is mentioned in the description below where I talk about how to shape your art style, or if you want to shape your art style with portraits, you can follow my course, Portrait Party, in which I will show you 30 different portraits with different mediums, different techniques, and different art styles. So this way, at the end of the course, you will sure know what you like and master what you need to achieve what you have in mind. You have the link in description. The third style is semi-realistic, and this is the one I use the most. What I mean by that is I tend to do realistic shapes and or realistic colors, but it's a bit pushed. The colors are pushed, the shapes are pushed, she has very big eyes and the shadows and the 3D effect is given by very strong colors, but still it's more realistic than this one. So this one would be stylized and this one would be semi-realistic. Same here, this one would be stylized because the colors are not accurate with reality, but this one would be more semi-realistic because the colors are kind of realistic, as well as the shape and those two as well because shapes are fine shapes are accurate kind of and the colors are sort of realistic <laughs> here same semi-realistic here too this one too this one is a bit on the edge And the last style I am using with portrait is realistic. This time I'm trying to be accurate both in the shapes and in the colors. I'm really trying to render what is in front of me. Either this one is a painting copy from Peter Croyer, which is a Danish or Swedish impressionist. I don't remember. Or like this one, which is a painting from the movie Dune, I was really trying to reproduce what I see and not going too far with the colors. Like this one too. Well, except for the background that is going inside of the hair. But the face, I am looking for realism. Same here. And yeah, she had green hair on the image. And this one, the face, I'm trying to be realistic, but still, I'm not doing hyper-realism. Not that I don't like hyper-realism, but just I don't master the technique of it, and I'm not interested in. This is what I said in another video where I was helping you to shape your art style. An art style is based on two things, your technical skills and what you like. So sometimes both don't match. Let's say hyperrealism, I like it, but I don't master it. And if you don't like it, you won't practice enough to master the skill. So this is a, a circle. If you like it, you'll practice. If you practice, you'll get better and you like it more and 
up and up. My style, I asked ChatGPT to describe it and he said, let me quote what he said. I don't know why I say he, because maybe it's a she. He said that it is a contemporary portraiture with elements of realism and expressionism because of the use of vibrant colors, the quality of the brushwork and the diversity of the portraits I'm using. Okay, fine, I take it. Expressionism for me is something that is a bit stronger than what I do. So I would qualify my global art style as semi-realistic. Not taking too much risk with this label on my art. And I'm curious, how would you qualify your art? Because hmm, that's something interesting. And also you don't have to stick to one style. You see, I have four of them, mainly. You can jump from one to another. You are the artist, so you do just whatever you want.